Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends and new acquaintances. I am Daniela Bass, the Director of the Division for Social Policy and Development at the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs in New York. I am very proud and happy to be among you today, though through this video. I have asked myself five questions and I gave myself five answers. I would like you also to think about these five questions and send me your answers so that we can work as one. The first question I asked myself was, how is the United Nations working to end poverty and inequality in the world? The Division for Social Policy and Development that I lead is charged with supporting the United Nations system in implementing the second United Nations decade for the eradication of poverty that ends in 2017. So, with less than one year remaining before the end of the second decade, the latest data shows that levels of poverty have dropped in all regions. However, challenges remain. One in eight persons live on less than $1.19 per day. Nearly 800 million people suffer from hunger. 1.1 billion people are living without electricity and water scarcity affects more than 2 billion people. One of the most effective ways of fighting poverty is through policy coherence and integration among the three pillars of sustainable development. In this regard, the United Nations is supporting efforts by member states to implement economic and social policies that promote inclusive growth, job creation, poverty eradication, and reduce inequalities. Boosting investments in education and health, promoting women's economic power, and empowerment, facilitating and managing structural changes that foster sustained and inclusive economic growth will all contribute to job creation and the eradication of poverty. Strengthening social protection measures is important to realizing a life of dignity for all. The second question is, how will the 2030 development agenda affect normal people? The 2030 Agenda contains goals and targets that affect lives of ordinary people. Governments have committed to achieving these goals. For instance, under SDG 4 on quality education, Target 4.2 seeks to ensure that by 2030 all girls and boys have access to quality early childhood development, care and primary education. In order to achieve this target in any given country, Socioeconomic policies should be enacted to ensure access to early childhood education. When such policies are implemented, children have better chances in life and it is easier for parents to achieve work-family balance. The other question, can families help to reach these goals? Well, families are essential for the achieving of the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. They take decisions about their children's health and education. It is up to parents to ensure the well-being of their children. What's more, families influence their children's health through their own behavior and the care they provide. Children in families with better resources and better parental care tend to be healthier. In this way, Families make an important contribution to achieving Sustainable Goal 3 on good health and well-being. For example, if I think of Target 3.2 on ending preventable deaths of newborns and children under five years of age, it depends on proper care by parents, ensuring immunization and health visits. I also ask me a fourth question. Are civil society international organizations such as IFFD relevant for the UN? We know that the strong civil society sector plays a key role in advancing social progress. Civil society organizations have their eyes and ears close to the ground. You see exactly where, when, how policies do and do not work to make a difference in people's everyday life. With that knowledge, you can empower individuals and communities to mobilize around the shared goals and needs and provide space for innovation in addressing the challenges. 
you also play an important oversight role. As collective bodies independent of the state, civil society organizations can help hold the decision makers accountable to their communities and to their commitments. Here at the United Nations, the value and necessity of your contribution is fully recognized. We will continue to seek your inputs, expertise, support and partnership. The last question, the fifth, quite a tricky. How is IFFD working in the UN system and why is it worth? As a representative of civil society present in so many countries, the IFFD is an important partner of the division I lead. As you know, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs is the focal point on the family for the whole UN system and has decided that it is hosted in the Division for Social Policy and, uh, and Development. So we are the house of the family. And we are very grateful for your support over the years, especially in preparation for the 20th anniversary of the International Year of the Family. By being at the UN, IFFD can see firsthand what issues are at stake, what are the development priorities, what strategies can be used to achieve them. IFFD can participate in the proceedings of the Commission for Social Development, which is the body of the Economic and Social Council. It's an advisory body. It's a main organ of the UN. The Commission is responsible for discussing social development policies which have the potential to contribute to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. I am aware that IFFD organizes side events of the Commission which help raise awareness of the importance of family policies to achieve a number of development goals. And I have had the privilege of participating in some of these events. IFFD also participates in events organized by member states and the civil society, where it can bring a family perspective to the discussions which may otherwise lack such a perspective. At the United Nations, it is also important to network with government officials, other NGOs and academics who take part in panel discussions at various events. I believe civil society should be active in all these endeavors and I'm pleased to see IFFD so active at this international forum. I thank you very much and wish you all success.